Hey everybody, uh, welcome, Coach Josh. I'm a few minutes early here, so I'm gonna drink some tea and give everybody a chance to log in if they're gonna attend. <clears throat> uh, because I couldn't um, use the same software last time, or that we've been using, I was unable to um, uh, to complete the schedule. So this is this is an unscheduled live, uh, but um, it's still gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna cover everything that we. Um, we're originally going to cover hopefully my phone because we couldn't use my laptop. Hopefully my phone doesn't run out of juice um, before we uh, before we end. So it's going to be a fun night. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hopefully you're um, having fun at home uh, with your family or out and about in some uh, uh, doing some sort of adventure and, and out there feeling good. Maybe even moving. I don't know. Maybe even cooking a healthy meal. Uh oh. I realize I've, I've got my, uh, I forgot to put my teeth in. Awesome. Thought it was too easy to talk. Okay. Whew. Well, what an exciting couple of weeks it's been i've been able to talk with a lot of folks uh online on dm and uh, uh in the videos uh, about things that they've been working on things that they've been stuck on things that have been holding them back and it's been fun to uh, break those things down and, and get into the weeds a little bit whether it's movement or uh motivation or nutrition or or all, all of the above so we're going to cover, in fact, this talk is going to cover just about everything that there is in the successful fitness program. So I'm going to reveal all of the five pillars that I use to, to help people and how they work together to overcome some of the common problems that I see in the, the fitness industry and the, the cycles of human behavior that we've been talking about, including the critical counterintuitive, so doing the counterintuitive thing that that um, successful people kind of automatically go towards, um, and uh, and also avoiding common pitfalls of uh, the the fallacy of effort, and um, using using some, some some secret tips and strategies to um, make your life easier and more efficient. So uh, let's get into it and. I'm going to use a concept tonight where I'm sharing with you my stuff, and it's um, it, instead of um, piling rules on all of our old habits and patterns, which is kind of what um, what the fit fitness industry is notorious for. Carbs are bad. Fats are bad. Um, you know, don't eat after 7 p.m. Only eat, you know, eat uh, in, a, in a six hour window between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. or Whatever the whatever the the current rule is, I even like more simple and um, and easy to follow rules like Michael Pollan's food rules. You know, um, eat mostly eat mostly plants, not too much um, uh, whole foods only, things like that. Um, these are all good. So I understand that heuristics and and guidelines are are helpful, but today I want to get away from the the concept of uh, rules and into the idea of an owner's manual. So less generic for, for the world and more specific to, to us as individuals. So the, the concept of the owner's manual has to do with checking in with yourself and what your body needs and how your body feels when you implement those strategies and tactics and techniques. So I want to start off. So there's five there's five pillars or five ways that um, I help people bring their health and fitness together, and those five pillars are food, stress management, nutrition, uh, change management, and sleep. And um, a couple of them, you know, work together. Like obviously, movement, you know, physicality and training is going to be in any fitness program and so is nutrition but uh change and 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 stress management and sleep 
they're related, right? So when we're stressed, we don't sleep as much, and, and sleep helps us um, to help help us helps us to stay to um, keep from being overwhelmed, and you know, in our day to day activities. And sleep is necessary for so many things, but when you have them all dialed in and working together, the stress management and the change management help smooth out that feeling of a roller coaster of that boom and bust cycle. So you go from highs and lows to more of a steady state. Now, stressors continue to happen, but you feel less push and pull in, in each direction when you have those pillars in your life supporting you. And when your fitness program is well designed, it's designed without the binge and purge uh, model or mindset and without those built-in peaks and valleys and highs and lows. Not to say that you won't have those, but uh, just by having a well-designed plan and program and having some key habits in place, there there's going to be more intrinsic stability and you're not going to feel, um, you're not going to feel like you're successful one week and then unsuccessful the next. You're on track one week and then off track the next. So the five pillars, nutrition, movement, change, stress, and sleep. And um, I want to start with food because that's probably the biggest one. And um, it's, it's probably, I mean, there's no mo most important pillar, but uh, the, the food is probably the most talked about uh, uh, idea in the fitness industry. And with all thousands and thousands of books published and all these, all these rules and all these strategies and diets, good or bad, it's certainly not helping. So we want to get away from the idea of rules. And if you think about um, an analogy, is like when you learn to drive, like remember how uh, the, when you were a young driver, the, the, the lines in the road, you're all, I mean, I was almost afraid of them. You know, I was, I was kind of teetering around like a bumper car in between the white and the yellow lines, like trying not to um, touch either one, trying to stay in the perfect spot. It was very nerve wracking, right? And as you become a, as I became a more developed driver, the, the lines became, I almost forgot they were there. And the, and the car kind of naturally slid between the lines and navigated, you know, it was so, so easy to navigate that I, I forgot about how the lines used to guide all of the actions that I took as a driver. And that's, that's the transition of, you know, the, the transition that we want for ourselves and our food rules to go from, you know, uh, raw, uh, powerful, uh, specific and almost a fearful uh, dedication to the rules to guidelines and guardrails. They're in our peripheral. We understand that they're there. Uh, we we don't bounce off them ideally, um, and we're not we're not worried about changing lanes and driving over them. But we know what they are. We know what they mean, and we know how to use them to get to where we want to go. So, uh, with that in mind, you know the. One of the, the, the first things that I start to talk about um, with my clients is how to eat in order to build your metabolism, burn fat, continue to feel good immediately. The benefit of this is when you're, you're eating according to your goals and your needs and your preferences, your energy and focus go up as soon as you start doing that and your stress and your, uh, your uh, reactivity go down. And hopefully, so does your weight and so does your, you know, your, fat, your fat loss begins as well. But when you start eating well and feeling good, everything else you do becomes easier. So when, when food becomes a, nurture, a nurturing nourishment, a nurturing activity, instead of a, a, a transactional activity, like I have to do this to get that, um, uh, everything in the, everything in your life gets easier to do, and my counter example to that is, I mean, I mean, ask yourself if you've ever been on a diet, and so like, <clears throat> most of the di I mean, I've I've tried lots of different diets, and it was always a little bit stressful, and I also always had a little bit of anxiety, especially at the beginning, but 
I'm not on that diet now. So the sustainability of most diets isn't forever, and it's not a way of, of living, right? It's a, it's a challenge for a period of time. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a short-lived proposition. And if we can, instead of feeling good at the end of our challenge, start to feel good at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the program, then you get the benefits up front. You start to feel good, and you can spend the rest of the time layering and building on skills. And if you're if you don't have a diet or a or a, a specific plan or a meal plan or strategy that you're following, then I would say you might be in the category where most of America is at this point, right? Most of America, according to the USDA's study in 2000, uh, at two, just 2000, so it was about 20 years ago. Most Americans are are on a path where they're eating about 20, 25% more calories than they're aware of. So they're gradually gaining weight over the course of a year, every year, year in and year out. And we're on autopilot for, for weight gain just because of the nature of our, our physiology and the environments that we live in. So hopefully that's not you, but if it is, you're in the majority because that's 60% of America at this point. Um, we're, we're, we're very far along on the health curve and it's only getting worse because of the pandemic. So we're under a lot of stress to change, but the, the old paradigm of dieting our way to do it or calorie restricting to do it has not been working and it's been making our lives harder. So the new way is changing from the inside out, building the owner's manual, owner's manual that I was talking about to help us um, navigate a new way or new way of eating that makes us feel good now and also gets us to where we want to go. And the if you the consequence of not doing this, just in case you think that um, I'm um, you know I'm off off base here, the consequence of not doing this is um, you become the person that eats the paleo brownies and. Um, I don't know if you are this person, if you are, I've got no, nothing against paleo or paleo brownies, but I see a lot of people taking new information, um, maybe about nutrition, maybe about exercise and integrating it and, 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 and morphing it in just such the right way so that they don't have to change what they're doing as a person. And obviously if you don't if you change what you're doing as a person, the results don't change either, but I have lots of friends who don't look any better, don't feel any better now than they did five years ago, but they eat paleo brownies, they, um, they, uh, they have an aura ring, they, um, they, 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 they you know, follow, maybe they are on a keto diet right now, and they, they attack the, the next trend, and they, in it, they, they change the information to meet their life where they're at now, and they don't end up changing to get to where they want to go. So the, the evidence is all around us, whether it's, a, you know, it's the boom and bust cycle of a diet or you have no plan and you're just getting whatever you get. But the, con the, the consequences, uh, I think, are already being lived in, 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 in my body and in the body of most Americans. So if that's not the plan, what is the plan? So this is, there's about 12 different skills that we run through in, in my program, but um, I'll give you the, the, one of the first two or two of the first skills that I share with everybody uh, as soon as we get started because I want people to start feeling good now. So the first two habits are eating slowly and eating to 80% full. Now, what's funny is this, this language is becoming so common that um, I'm, I'm hearing people in the gym talk about it. I'm hearing people, you know, online talk about it. It's just becoming the narrative. Uh, I've even seen some TV personalities talk about eating to 80% full or to your just leaving yourself a, having a little bit of hunger at the end of your the end of your meal. And, and that's awesome that, that this is starting to land with the general public. But when you do these two things, and you're not counting calories, you're not trying to adhere to some diet that doesn't make any sense to you. But you change the, the way that you're getting nutrition from the food that you're eating. 
And so by doing that and living that way, you're, you're starting to change your body. And you don't need to, you don't need to have a meal plan or a, a batch cooking plan or any sort of fancy strategy in order to execute it. You can do it right now. You can, you can do it today. So you're probably thinking like, well, okay, Josh, what do I eat? Well, <laughs> when my when working with my clients, I usually let them guide that. So they give me their preferences and I give them things to select from and shout out to Tony because I just got to uh, make my first Mexican meal plan. Actually, she made it and I watched her put in things like video and cactus and all kinds of fun stuff um, that I, I hadn't actually got to, to, to witness before. So I had to do a lot of Googling recipes and things like that, but I'm super excited to, to do that for more people now that I got to expand my skill set uh, a little bit. But so uh, I help people you know, that I work with do that immediately with their preferred foods and to their customized to their goals. But take what you want to eat now. And you probably already know like the things that make you feel good. Like what are the lean proteins that make you feel good? Do you like chicken? Do you like tofu? Do you like broccoli? Do you like sweet potatoes? You know, um, if you like chocolate, that's awesome, but you're probably not going to eat that for dinner. So, 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 you, you know, use your intuition to build out a plate and then you can start to eat slowly to 80% full right now and see how that treats you as time goes on. <sighs> Doing a lot of talking. Um, but, uh, that's just the beginning. Uh, if you're working with me, I'll help you with grocery lists, um, recipe books, um, portion sizes, cheat sheets, done for you stuff, done with you stuff. Um, there's a ton more uh, that, that you can get into in the nutrition plus the skills of intuitive eating and how to make that scalable towards your goals. The point is that you have a strategy that you start with. I gave you my first two already. Eating to 80% full and uh, eating slowly. Do those. And then see how your body reacts, see how you feel, and you'll be able to start to gauge what you need as time goes on. And you can build on it from there. So that's how we approach food. That's one of the that's one of the pillars of my five pillar program. And um, the next one that I want to talk about is stress management. So like stress management. And change management are very deeply related, but I want to talk about stress management first because the uh, you know I shared with you guys the confidence versus um, effort graph yesterday, and um, I, don't think, I don't know if I still have it. The graphics department has been slacking today, but here it is again. Uh, so uh, on this side, I've got confidence. Impact is on the, uh, you know, my right, your left, probably. <clears throat> and the what takes a lot of effort, and what are you what are you really confident in executing every single day, changes depending on how difficult or how much stress that you're under. So uh, as you're stress increases your ability to to produce effort and your ability to be confident in your consistency around that will also change so having some process for change management is mandatory so that your program is sustainable and if you've ever you know had like a, a you know beach body workout or p90x or done the whole 30 and then two weeks into it your kids got sick or uh, you, got, you had to start a work project and you got derailed, then you already know what that's like to have stress inserted into your life and not have a plan to adapt, to, to tolerate stress and to prepare. And, and it derailed your, your progress. Now, you just restart, but restarting your, restarting your program every time something crazy happens in your life, one, you're going to be restarting a lot, Two, it, it, it turns on this, um, or it, it trains this pause button mentality of um, not progressing or, or halting your progress when things get bad. 
and <laughs> sometimes you can't move forward, right? Like I'm not saying that you know mind over matter and drive on, but things are going to come up all the time, and we have to have a way to tolerate and adapt the stress. Otherwise, um, we're never going to get to where we want to go. So that's why stress management is one of the pillars that I, uh, I, I is in my program. I work with everybody on how to prepare and tolerate stress. And this is so that it smooths out that, again, boom and bust cycle, the roller coaster that is so, I mean, it's a, it's a part of every human's life that I've ever met. And without that uh, stress management plan, there you just end up you know, in that pause button mentality and you end up more pause for longer than necessary, longer than is helpful, and it ends up in impacting your results. And, and it also helps you practice, I mean, you end up practicing pausing more than you're practicing the skills that you want to, that you want to create. So <clears throat> the, um, the benefit of, you know, working, <laughs> working with, on stress management while you're working on your health and fitness is that um, your life feels more calm and manageable while you're going through your health program. And the, the additional benefit, I mean, stress, you know, managing stress is important for your overall health no matter what, but the additional benefit is that you're, you're not at the whim, at the behest of the world, you're not a victim to circumstances, but you're creating an environment, a resilient environment that can help you stay successful no matter what's going on in your life. And the counter example, again, you're probably, you've probably already lived it. If you've ever been derailed from a fitness program, then, uh, then you already know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, then you are amazing. And you should email me so you can teach me some things because I have been derailed quite a bit and especially lately in my life. I'm going to drink some tea here. Hold on. Oh my gosh. That is really good. <clears throat> Coming in and out. Okay, so the consequence of, of executing your fitness program with a stress management plan in place is that you have fewer obstacles come up because you're predicting them and you're smoothing things out in advance. You have a lot less stress. And you have a lot less friction and things just feel less heavy in your life as you, uh, as you move forward through the plan. It also keeps your consistency and adherence up so that you get more results from the actions that you're taking because you're taking more actions every day. OMG, it's a win, 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 win. Only winning. It's only winning over here. Okay, so what the French do, do you want me to do, Josh? So all, all I want you to do is to... Set aside time for yourself every day to take a five minute action. And this can, this action just needs to be something that benefits only you. So for instance, um, if you're a parent or a business owner, there's probably a lot of things for, for yourself that you've been putting off. So like making a medical appointment, um, you know, uh, calling a friend to, to tell them thank you. Um, uh, packing your lunch. I mean, there's all kinds of five minute act actions that you can take and just get up and take right now that are going to take a stress and burden off your mind, having a conversation that you've been meaning to have, whatever it is, um, that will um, ease the burden on your mind and on your soul and make you feel better. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's in, in a nutshell, I mean, taking away worry and feeling better and, and more focused, that's, that's the essence of stress management. So the, uh, taking a five minute action is step one and then um, planning ahead. So um, by that I mean planning out and predicting like where your stresses are gonna come from. So it's like, um, you know, uh, 
being on time for work or on time for appointments and like leaving, you know, five minutes before you need to leave or 10 minutes before you need to leave um, is a simple, like that's, that's, that's a form of planning. Another form of planning is, um, you know, over communicating, pre communicating details um, about things like, um, you know, if you're doing, if you're hosting a party, like, you know, um, checking with the guests, who's bringing the food, like uh, uh, sort of just, just standing out the, the conflict and the details ahead of time. The more you plan ahead, the less things surprise you and, and the less surprises you have. I mean, <clears throat> you might say you like surprises, but surprises that you don't like are also known as problems. So the more planning that you do, the, the less stress that you're going to have. So those, those two habits, taking the five-minute action and planning ahead, are going to decrease your friction and are going to increase your quality of life immediately and they're free and you don't have to you don't have to get permission to do them there's a bunch more strategies and tactics that i use in my program to help people and a lot of our stress is around um you know how we're relating to ourselves so we talk about checking in with ourselves and doing body scans and and um, having compassion and um, also crucial conversations and, and setting aside time and energy for those crucial converse, crucial conversations is just as important as um, all of the other activities that you do in your health and fitness program. So we've covered food, stress management, and now we're going to drop. Ooh, it's three, three, three. We're gonna we're gonna got, we're gonna cover movement uh, really quick, which is you know you had to expect me to talk about that uh, in my program because it's one of the main reasons that people hire coaches is because exercise programs and and um, uh, movement plans are so popular. So the biggest mistake I see people make here that most almost all of America makes. Right, um, at least at the beginning, and you may not be here, but you but you might have been here in the recent past. Is trying to use high in intensity exercise to outrun your fork, and uh, this is another way of saying it is using your movement as your fat loss vehicle, and that sounds that sounds like a, a normal thing to do, and that sounds intuitive. The problem with that is. Is that it doesn't work and the the <clears throat> working out harder than necessary working out with the intensity of, of trying to change your body through movement alone uh, it often helps you squeeze the joy out of the moment and uh, makes training and exercise a chore but it doesn't actually get you to where you want to go it doesn't get you the results and the goal. So moving well and moving often is one of the first things that I work on with people. It's one of the core pillars of my program. And there's so many benefits from changing your, your, your perspective on this. The biggest one is when you change your relationship with your body from being uh, transactional to collaborative, movement becomes a source of stress relief a source of joy. Uh, obviously, you, you know, it's a, a skill building process to build strength and muscle or speed or grace or or it becomes a way for you to follow your desire um, more than to get you to to a, a finish line or a goal of, of where you want to be. And that shift in relationship sounds like simple and easy and subtle, but it's a huge deal if you've been trying to use fitness for um, as a vehicle for fat loss or trying to use exercise itself as a vehicle for fat loss. And the, 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 the biggest problem with that is people who focus on exercise alone over the course of six months, this is a study done by the University of Michigan recently, over six months, most of the participants experience no weight loss with the, the top 10% of the class experiencing only four pounds of weight loss in six months. And four pounds of, of weight loss after six months of training is one, I mean, that's not a lot of 
that's not a lot of progress. Number two, uh, if you made it to the end of that program, I don't know if you'd have the motivation to keep exercising and training to try and take it further. But because <laughs> but for a lot of reasons, um, the adaptations wouldn't continue anyway. And my whole point is, is that sounds like a long, hard road and we want to avoid making things more difficult. We want to avoid adding friction to the process and we want to make things, we want to <clears throat> get on the fast track to improving our energy, to imp improving our, our bodies and to getting all the benefits we can from our movement program right at the beginning. So we want to have a shifted mindset about that. The, the, uh, like, so what to do? Well, what to do, you know, and so your, your next steps, if you want to integrate movement to your life in a, in a new way, is write out the body that you want and what, what the qualities that you want to have. Some people want to have grace and move like a dancer. Some people want to be uh, powerful and explosive athletes. Other people just want to lose weight and look good naked, which is absolutely fine. Um, you know, I also want to be confident in my body and look good naked. So, so write down the things that you want from your body and do the things that make you feel that way. Uh, so if you are, you know, want to be strong and you know, well then if you want to be strong and build muscle tone, then you should probably lift heavy weights. So start with a, a simple program and, and work your way up from there. And there's so many great ones. Um, I just gave a, a few people some free programs here uh, in our private group. But the important thing is, again, use the same strategies I was sharing with everyone on Tuesday, is starting not at the most that you can do, but beginning um, at a level of training and conditioning that actually feels a little bit too easy and maybe too doable. So if you're super motivated and you want to work out five days a week, start with twice a week. And if you want to work out more than that, uh, you can, you know, have put fun activities for your exercise and training. But I've been working in the fitness industry for a long time, and I found that two to three times per week of, of weight training is the most that, you know, the most that is needed to, to get really, really great results. Unless you're an elite athlete or you're um, a competitive athlete of some kind who uh, needs to be very, very strong with barbells and powerful and explosive, you don't need to work out forever. You don't need to work out five days a week. So doing the things that make you feel good um, and doing the things that make your body feel alive. And again, if you want to build muscle, then have incorporating some kind of resistance training are mandatory uh, for you to get to where you want to go. So do the things that make you feel the way that you want to feel and see how that, see how that treats you. There are so many great programs out there. Um, I think I'll post, I'll post a link on this video thread. Uh, I'll post a few links to some of my favorite programs that aren't mine, that are from other coaches. And um, um, they're all amazing. And there's literally thousands. Uh, I feel like the internet is only workout programs. So, because that's all I see anymore. But um, um, yeah, take a shot. And if you want me to help you find one that works for you, happy to help you do that. <clears throat> Explore your passions, do less, th do less than the most as you can do. So take what you take the most that you can do and start with half of that. If you can work out three times a week, work out, you know, start out once a week. If you can work out four times a week, start out twice. And then uh, yeah, it's going to help feed your desire and your hunger for more. And you always want to be hungry for movement. I always am. Um, you don't want to drown yourself and drink from the fire hose and lose that passion and that joy for for movement and uh, miss out on um, on the benefits and not have fun while you're doing it. Okay, that's three of the five pillars. Going through my notes here. covered stress, I've covered food, I've covered movement, now I want to cover sleep. So sleep is 
Um, God, sleep is, um, is, is one of the most important pillars because without good sleep, sleep's probably, I mean, it's right there with food and you'll die without it. Um, if you don't have sleep, if you don't have sleep, you're not going to learn as well. You're not going to be able to focus as well. Your body is going to shut down. So it's, it's an X factor. Uh, it's like oxygen. You, you absolutely have to have uh, some amount of quality sleep in your life. And you should also have a strategy for getting the most quality sleep out of your body um, that you can implement for you so that you're always as rested and as strong and as present as you can be in your daily life. And I feel like, um, gosh, in, in, since the pandemic has... Um, has kicked off, I have had a bigger struggle with sleep than I've ever had in my entire adult life, back when I had more things to do and was busier and was uh, all over the place. <clears throat> so... How much sleep do you need? So if your sleep's a pillar, you know, what's the, what are the, what are the keystones to that pillar? And, um, I think that it's easy to say like, oh, we need eight hours of quality sleep. Well, there's, there's, there's a study or actually there's many studies now that show that, um, by sleeping a little bit more than whatever you're sleeping, you're going to get crazy good benefits to your IQ, to your metabolism, to your, um, problem solving to your ability to learn new skills and retain information. So uh, whether you're sleeping six hours and you're trying to get to six hours and 15 minutes, or you're sleeping eight hours and you want to go to eight out eight and a half hours. I mean, every increment matters. And even up, I mean, for elite athletes, sleeping nine, 10 hours is still beneficial. So the amount of sleep that you need is going to depend on what your, you know, what your demand is, um, what you're, what you're sleeping now, um, how comfortable you are with that, meaning what your quality of life is and how tired and, and energetic you feel during the day. And, uh, and then what you can, what you can commit to in terms of your sleep rituals. So we'll get into the how in a minute, but, um, gosh, there's really no, um, there's really no uh, um, program in the world, or there's no plan in the world that can you that can help someone be successful without quality sleep. So I feel like arguing the you know the counterexamples and the um, and the consequences doesn't even matter. But um, I will tell you that um, people who are sleep deprived have been um, shown time and time again to eat more calories, specifically more calories from carbohydrates. Their low energy state it has them very energy depleted and they're craving food. So uh, their ability to regulate how many, how, many, how much food they eat, specifically how, how much carbohydrates, so bread, crackers, snacks, cookies, things that are lying around the environment all the time in just about every you know building in America. The the ability to regulate those types of foods is low, so their calorie intake is much higher. So people who are not sleeping well often tend to put on that spare tire around the midsection. They tend to develop diabetes a lot more easily. And, you know, it's like a, uh, it's like a uh, negative reinforcing cycle because the more weight that you have, the harder it is to get quality sleep, the more at risk you are for sleep apnea and things of that nature. So... Sleep's very critical. Um, the consequences of not getting good sleep are are dramatic. Um, I mean, you, you see low or immediate drops in you know relative IQ, immediate drops in interpersonal skills, irritability goes up, and also I just talked about the cravings um, that, that humans have. So all these things are very very um, are are damaging, and the benefits of sleep are are just, uh, well, you know, if you've ever got a good night's sleep, how do you feel the next day? We'll do that for a month or a year and see what happens. So, so uh, how do we do that? So in my program, 
I always start with controlling what time you wake up and what time you go to bed. So like setting those guardrails, right? So if you're somebody who um, has a hard time going to sleep at the same time every night, I understand. I think that's that's most of us. But having a, a time where you go and get into bed is like 85% of the battle. Now, if you're on there on your phone or you're um, playing video games or whatever else you're doing, that can make your life harder. But just the fact that you're controlling when, when you're winding down your activity and getting into bed is huge. And controlling your wake-up time is, is, is bigger in a sense because when you wake up, your diurnal pattern, so that's when your hormones turn on, your cortisol, your adrenaline, things that allow you to focus and engage with the world, well, they start, and, and when they start at the same time, they turn off at the same time. So maintaining that bedtime and going to bed on time is actually even easier as time goes on. The more that you do it, the more that you wake up at the same time, the easier it is to maintain your sleep cycle and schedule. And if you want to uh, get some extra benefits, that the closer you are to, or get out into the sun, let the sunlight hit your skin um, closer to your wake up time, so you can get over to a window, let the sunlight sun shine on you that way. Or if you can um, um, get outside earlier in the morning, earlier in the day, that's also going to help you get get to bed on time and get that higher quality sleep from a hormonal perspective, and also from an activity perspective. So. All of those things are very beneficial, but um, the, the, the different rituals that you might need can highly depend on um, your job, your role in the family, um, and, and, the, and the obligations that you have. So there's a lot of externalities to that or external factors you, that um, we have to take into account. But if you can start with those guardrails, that's probably the, the, the two biggest input factors to uh, uh, to getting to a high quality sleep cycle and there's about eight more rituals and, and ideas I, I help people with but I want to get going on in the program or, or get going <sighs> I want to get further in the program to talk about um, change as it relates to all the things that we're talking about and um, an emotional regulation so that um, you can understand how to uh, control that roller coaster. So, been I've been talking about effort, and I want to talk about efforts, sort of kissing cousin um, motivation. And the fifth pillar of uh, of my program is um, change management, and change management is um, is how how our lives and environment, how our how how our lives shift away from our expectations. And how we manage the emotions that come with those changes, right? Um, and motivation is is um, a, a byproduct of sort of the emotional bandwidth that we have to plug into the things that we care about. So our ability to sit with change and the emotions that come up in our bodies is directly related to the amount of motivation that we have access to to leverage into things like exercise nutrition and training so it's not a glamorous uh, pillar and it's not like the most the, the the sexy skills to build like journaling and meditation and um and what have you but they are um but but that is a, one of the keystones to sustainability in a fitness program and I don't. I think I would be remiss. I mean, I, I've noticed that people get a lot of the benefit out of those, particularly after the last two years that we've had in America with the coronavirus and all the changes in our people and our families and in our social fabric. So, the value of change management, and emotional regulation, and self awareness can't be overstated. But it's easy to it's easy to get lost in the life coaching space where. Um, everyone's talking about motivation and focus and discipline and all these like fancy and important you know skills, uh, but they can they can be made overwrought and complex if we're not paying attention to the simplicity of it. Just it just all it is is measuring how much 
and motivation that we have left to apply to what we want, you know, or our willpower, if you will. So the benefit of um, doing, you know, of, of having a practice where you're checking in with yourself and you're noticing the feelings, thoughts, and emotions that are coming up with us inside of, inside of you is that you're less reactive, you're more proactive, and uh, it's easier to stay consistent with the habits, behaviors, and changes that you're trying to make in your life. And <clears throat> I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm dealing with this uh, right now as I've had so many medical issues over the last two months, you know, whether it's um, surgery or hospital visits or sickness or another surgery and, and you know, capacities change and ugh, lots of, um, and, you know, emotional, uh, emotional, emotionally impactful moments. But uh, the practice of checking in with myself, reaching out to friends, journaling a lot and getting clear on the things that are struggling, that I'm struggling with and are bothering me are um, keeping me from getting fixated on things I can't control or things I don't like or emotions I don't want to deal with and allowing me to move, move forward and move on to the next task or the next thing to help solve problems and to um, make my life a little bit easier. So um, the benefits are huge and the consequences of not dealing with those things, well, I mean, um, I know I've, I got this my go-to, but it's like, um, if you don't have a practice of checking in with yourself, if you don't have a practice of um, n noticing and naming the emotions that are coming up um, with you in regards to, you know, your, <clears throat> your tasks at hand and the things that you have to deliver, uh, how you're feeling about your close personal relationships, and things of that nature, then how is that working for you? Because if you don't have any friction, if you don't have any challenges, struggles, or, or drama along, the, along those lines, then you're probably way ahead of me and you're not watching the video anyway. So awesome. But if, um, if those are a source of pain, pain, friction, or drama, then it's been impacting your health in some way and addressing it will help you out. So the, one of the first skills that I work with people on in this pillar is notice and name. And so all that, it is exactly what, you know, you, you think it is. It is noticing, you know, inside your body when a feeling comes up, like anxiety, fear, <laughs> running out of battery, but that's okay. We're almost through. Fear, anxiety, anger, and where in your body that those come up. And just naming it. And once you notice, once you pay attention to yourself and how you're feeling, the, uh, the sensation is already somewhat soothed and calmed. And this is a big part of self-soothing. This is a big part of um, um, you know, inner peace. But it's also a big part of health because the longer that you ignore things, the more dramatic the actions and the activities are to um, that take you away from um, what you're doing so what begins with a little you know uh, tension in the chest you know can become a panic attack if, if ignored long enough I suffer from panic attacks so I know that when I ignore my the tension in my gut and the tension in my belly that if I do that for long enough if I if I drive through it and work through it then I end up having a very hard time dealing with um, with stress, I end up hyperventilating, I'll end up not being able to make decisions, and um, I can end up getting sick, or just, you know, having a, an attack and freaking out, not being able to move, and I sit on the floor of my apartment paralyzed for three hours, you know, that's, that's at least what would happen if I weren't managing it, so you may not have panic attacks, you may have, you know, other things that, that bother you, but um, I found that addressing this you know, working with people directly on these things has helped improve their focus, decrease their discomfort with adopting new behaviors, and helps keep people from freaking out as change, which inevitably comes, comes knocking on their door. So, uh, again, um, 
in the program. Lots more strategies, tips, and um, and and, uh, and and works or uh, <laughs> and and tools done for you and done with you. But all of these things for your your health program to be complete, I believe that all five of these things need to work together to synergize and uh, um, and, and and feed each other so that you're not um, you're not trying to uh, import uh, you're not trying to, to import the engine of a, a NASCAR race car onto a uh, onto a soapbox derby car and you start to drive you, you want to drive 200 miles an hour in a cardboard box with some plastic uh, training wheels on it and they end up all blowing apart at the seams because the, the, the base, the chassis, the support and the stability isn't there. So you end up not getting traction and not being successful uh, in the long run. <sighs> I drink some more tea before I ask if there's any questions. I can't wait. Hi, right, my heart's out to you guys for uh, whoever followed these videos all the way to the end. I've got this um, retainer fake tooth uh, from my bicycle accident. It makes me sound like I've got a lisp um, constantly. So I get that. Um, I, I get rid of that retainer and get a real implant um, replacement tooth here in the next month. So. Hopefully my future videos will be a lot easier to follow and a lot more fun and um, won't take so much out of me to, to communicate. But um, I appreciate everybody who has uh, made it through to the end. And I hope that I gave some clarity and some help and support along the way. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, um, hit me up online in the group and I will, I will continue to uh, uh, refine this stuff and give you more useful strategies so that you can get to where you want to go. Um, burn fat, build muscle, feel good, and bring out the warrior within.